What is the boldest thing you think you've done? Well, I did some pretty bold things musically. I mean, I, I recorded with uh, Nelson Riddle, you know, and I recorded American Standard songs at a time when American pop music had decided that American Standard songs needed to ride up and down in elevators for the rest of their natural lives. I have got a crush, my baby. And it was a shame because I think what the United States gave the world at large culturally was the American popular song. And f by far the best, the most beautifully crafted, the most complex, and the most artistic of all uh, American popular songs is, is the American Standard song, um, you know, uh, a la George Gershwin or Rogers and Hart. I mean, those guys were just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant composers, both orchestrally and in terms of the way they crafted their lyrics so that they were multiple layered, they could be as intellectual as you wanted them to be. They could be just about a broken heart. They could be about the fact that you lost your job. It could be all those things in one song. And anybody at any level could relate to it. And that is a brilliant thing to be able to do. No small task. As Linda Ronstadt's career flourished, so did her curiosity. And music became a way to reconnect with her heritage. Linda's childhood memories of singing folk songs with her Mexican-American father inspired her to open up a part of her life that had been mostly hidden from her fans. And she decided to record an album in Spanish. You know, I didn't do it because it was a career move. <laughs> I did it because I love Mexican music passionately. I love the culture passionately, and I wanted to explore it. They had the guys in there that, that knew the traditions beautifully and were very generous with their time to, to, to help to teach me. I, I knew a lot of it from my childhood growing up, but I didn't know it as a grown-up lady singer or as a professional. I just knew it kind of three or four lines and then la, 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 la. So I sat with them and they taught me, and we went on the road together, and when I was on the road, they taught me more. It was just a fabulous experience. But when you started it, when you decided to go in this direction, was there someone around you, an agent, perhaps someone in your family said, listen, don't do this, this is, this is a bad career move. Maybe my manager said, what are you talking about? I told my record company, and this was after I'd already done the Nelson Riddle stuff with the standards, and they, they were sure I just completely lost my mind, and I said, please, let me do this. I've sold so many records for you. Let me just have this as a, as a self-indulgence, if nothing else, but I'm just determined to do this, and this is what I'm going to do. But, you know, uh, there's another thing that happens. I think because of racism, it's happened to African Americans too, but because of racism, there's a huge portion of the, of the community out there that's simply invisible. Mexican Americans fall into that category. They don't realize that they have tremendous buying power, that they have a lot of opinions about the things they like and they dislike. And when we went to do our concerts, we, we weren't sure who was going to show up because we didn't think the rock and roll people were going to show up, and they, they didn't particularly, some of them turned out. But what really came were these Mexican-American families, and it was the grandmother, the, grand, you know, the grandchildren, the, the kids, the mom. And the grandparents were remembering these songs because they're from earlier time, earlier in the 20th century, and they're remembering that they were their songs of courtship, you know. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is they scared the promoters to death everywhere we went because they don't, Mexicans are not in a big hurry, so they didn't go and buy tickets in advance. They just walk up and buy tickets when they got there. So every single night when we would open, we wouldn't know if anybody was going to show up. Well, because advance <laughs> sales were lagging. Advance sales weren't, weren't good. But the place was always full of brown faces and all these you know, kids and grandmothers. It was fabulous. And they always knew the right place to yell. Like Lots of times in, with a rock and roll audience, I'll be singing some tender ballad like Desperado, and they'll go, hey, wave, you know, right in the middle of the line. But Mexicans, they just catch you on the beginning of the emotion when you're about to have a, an emotional climax and they go, yeah, you know, they'll start hollering and, it's, and it just moves you along. They know exactly how to keep you going. It's really neat. It's a very different kind of an audience. 